w with everything that he's won at the end of the year and all the rest of it, we knew he was in a great place. But uh, John, whilst obviously a world-class player, we were a little bit less certain, and he's he's really taken the mantle in the first couple of days and and been excellent. And it's worth pointing out, I mentioned it in his earlier match, he's done it with an absolutely rotten early draw. He's beaten some serious players to get to this absolutely. stage, considering a lot of the big hitters went out in the round in the first round well, to big underdogs. John's beaten the rest, basically, yeah. is, is how it sort of looked. But the top four went out. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been some run for him. Phil's going to get first go in the final. And despite opening those yellows up slightly, the cue ball's gone awkward for him. Slightly tough final this for Phil, just because he's coming right off the back of his semi with, with Cormac Kerr, which he got over. It's a grueler. Played well. And he's, uh, he's going to row back. Doesn't like the chance he's been presented with, so... Both players will get a shot in the first frame of the Pro Series 1 final. Race to eight in the final. Worth repeating. So, to my point about Phil just rolling straight back on and off, I know he's he's the veteran of a billion club tournaments where he just plays 14 hours straight routinely every weekend, but it's a different sort of environment out there in the under the bright lights and on the big stage that he... He's going to have to go really well to sort of keep that stamina, but also let the semi-final go and quickly refocus on the final. Not an easy thing to do. That's the hard bit because I think, you know, you've won a semi-final, you, you know, the, the elation or the relief, wh whichever way you look at it, that you've made the final, that has to be gone within minutes. You know, and it's a reset, start again. Um, and he had some tricky frames. Phil Harrison was breaking badly for 90% of that match. And he got a ball here and there, and he picked off some really tough little finishes. Obviously, the last break, he splattered them, and, he, and, it, and it was his best one, probably of the tournament, the way, way the Reds came out. But McAllis has had a little bit of rest because he was in the final. He got to probably go up to his room and chill out while Harrison was battling away with Cormac Kerr. So I think that's probably why when Chris said, you know, I said, give us a score prediction, he says 8-6, mccallister has got to be the favourite. And I think probably just because he's just had that little bit of extra time to focus. Yeah, and he's also, he's gone through his, he's gone through his work very quickly today. He's played a lot less, he's been a lot, he's, well, he's, put, he's spent a lot less minutes out in the arena. He's had three 7-1 wins today yeah. out of, I think, four matches. And Harrison's had a six red. Yeah, plus a gruelling semi-final. Yeah. And he's had to go home and plough the field, <laughs> come back again on his tractor at the M6 <laughs> and the M55. Might as well be on a tractor on yeah. the M6 at times. That's a good point. So John's got a little bit of work to do. He, he burst out his red to the bottom left early on in the frame really well, but the red just below the eight ball is now his biggest problem. You'd imagine his plan is to leave it for a double at this point. Or has he got something else in mind, do you think, Tony? No, I think you're, you're on the right lines here. Um, maybe he's just looking at the was it red into the cushion and into the yellow. And can he scrape that along now? I don't think he can. I, I, I think there's just well, a little bit more gap between yellow and cushion to get that red along there. Well, he might what? make a liar out of me, I don't know. but Ooh. He's not a time foul there. He's, he's actually looking really composed on the beeps, is John. The, the, what he just lined up there, I wonder, Tony... Is he looking at a treble on that red for a potential big pocket underneath the yellow? Possibly. Was it, that what I he was mean, looking at there? Well, I think he's looking to get behind it now because I think he's, he, he does have a little bit of angle where he could just put some top and right hand side of this, just slide behind the black ball and spin it down. But you know, he's going with a bit of force, I think, the way he's queuing it. Oh, wow, what a shot. Is he a little bit unlucky or is he okay? Good news, bad news. Yeah. Can he play it off the yellow and off the in, into the centre? Oh, hello, that would oh. be a shot. First frame in the Pro Series final. We, the thing, well, I mean, the black ball's going to be sailing up into the yellow that's, that's above it up the table. The, the cut's really thin and I don't think you can remove the black out of there if he plays the, the thin cut. Oh, what a shot. Oh, it oh. didn't drop. I thought it was in. Well, he did well to get to even get the cue ball to go into the rail and, and nudge that black. The nip he's got on this is incredible. Oh, 
oh, it just dangled over the lip, Dude. didn't it? Thought about it. But he had to play it at that pace to get the injection into the cue ball and have it come back out. That's that's tough for John. It was a tough finish. He didn't quite get there. First blinking Probably in the long, final. That's a long, this is the longest frame that John's played in a while, I think. Mm. Yeah, there's not been many with more than... Played well, with multiple visits. Played, played a great shot there, Phil Harrison. Yeah, didn't he just... Didn't he just... Phil has been a relentless winner over a, a storied eight ball career. He is one of the all time greats. A phrase I often use to describe Phil is he's your favourite pool player's favourite pool player. Well, I first saw him at Pontins at Southport at the Pro Am then back in the ooh, about 94, 95. And uh, I was, <laughs> was in the. Uh, in the evening, you, you played doubles matches, there'd be flyers and all of this, and then uh, one, of, one of my mates, Rob Hill, came up to me, uh, another professional from Essex, and he says, there's a guy down there um, uh, from Cambridge Way looking, for, looking to play somebody for 200 quid tonight, like first of seven. I said, I'll play him. I said, who is he? He said, oh, I don't know, some lad down there called Phil Harrison. I've gone down there, he's absolutely told me a new one. I've lost walked away, I thought, and I was like, <laughs> I said, no, I'm not, not for me. I said, I said, where's he come from? Yeah. And and that was the arrival of Phil Harrison for me, and I think he went deep into the into the big pro am event, and it, it sounds it's history. Yeah, well, it, it's it sounds like the beginning of one of those like sort of meme stories, doesn't it? And that kid right there, he went on to become world champion. What a player he's he's showing as he still is, because turned 50 last year, Phil Harrison. He's officially a senior. He is. He's a gentleman as well. Oh, you couldn't meet a nicer bloke. No. Yeah, he went through a little patch of, of, of his, when he had his children and that, you know, the time that's obviously most time was spent as they were growing up and so, you know, came out of a few tournaments here and there, but he still always was, was there and then when they got a bit older, he started playing and playing them more and more and now he's back. And, uh, he, he's back and the one thing about Phil is, as well as just been... You know, a, a relentless competitor. I mean, he was in England international for years and years and years. He won big titles. He won the World Masters, I think, more than anybody else. He's won a World Championship in the in this sport's heyday of its of its greatest era, widely acknowledged in 2009. And you know, all that's well and good. But what he's also done over the last 20 years is he's probably won more events than anybody else in general. Because if there's a club tournament within 50 miles of Phil, <laughs> of Phil Harrison on a, on a weekend in the last 15 years, he's been there and he's been cleaning up. He is the king of the club tournament. I'll tell you another thing as well. He's brought some of those those young lads. That we've got some young professionals here from that neck of the woods. Yeah. The Dom Cooney. Luke, Luke Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. Right. And they've all come along and they look up to him. He's like the, the sort of father figure for, for those for those players in that area. He is, and they, they treat him with a huge degree of, of respect and, also, and, and almost reverence, actually. But they've got so much respect for his pro, for his game, but he's so familiar with him that they almost have that sort of like fun uncle sort of yeah. relationship with him. They they both give each other uncle some serious Phil. stick. Yeah, it's it's a good it's a good little bunch, the uh, the Cambridge bunch. Yeah, they all they all cheer each other on. I was on comms with. Uh, Don Cooney match earlier with, with, with young Luke and that's his doubles partner and he said every time he played his, uh, any sort of like a, a little dodgy shot he said oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him some stick about that later yeah it's, it's, it's what it's all about good banter yeah. good fun that's what it's all about so this is all a little three ball plant here yeah all come down to this for John McAllister in, in this frame he's uh, he's built up to this he's accepted this position from quite a while out I think this is all about how well he gets onto the next ball. The three-ball plant isn't the tough shot here. What's he on next? Well, the, the first red, the, top, the, the one he's going to strike, is going to go towards that left-hand corner. That's where he'll be heading. Yeah, that's well judged. That's come out nicely. The black obviously goes into that centre. He's just had a little glance into a double check, which he knows anyway, because he'll, he'll have looked at that a while <laughs> ago. And the way this man's been playing, you not going to be any mistakes from here. No. 
He's had a uh, he's had a brilliant run to the final, John McAllister. Seven one in his semi final against Aaron Davies, in which Aaron didn't get a shot until he was five nil down. Seven one against Jez Graham in the quarter final. I'll tell you what, Aaron Davies has been playing sublime today. He's curious mm. is some of the shots he's playing up and down rails I, I, I was lucky enough to I think I'll come and take on a couple of Aaron's games. Brilliant. Yeah, and it took a performance like that from John to beat him in the semi. Aaron didn't get a touch at the table until he's 5-0 down. That's a very tough place to come back from in a race to seven. As John knocks in the eight ball to square us up at one each after the first two frames. God, that break is good. Yeah, he deserved a ball there. And he's got one. And he's... I was going to say he's got a good split and then I caught the yellow at the bottom right. Yep. <laughs> and I'm not sure it is. In he spotted it at the same time as you did, Stephen. Yeah. So you look at the top of the table, you think, oh, yellows are gone. And then you see the one at the bottom right, and it's a problem. And reds and reds are probably going to be the ball, but has he got an opening shot? I'm not sure. Well, the long plant. Long plant. Has to be reds. Played it well. Yeah, he'll take that all Thank day. Thank you very much. Had a good conversation with uh, after the the World Masters win last year with with Declan Brennan after he took out a, a brilliant finish in the final frame against Tom Cousins and you might remember it those who saw it it involved a, a really really amazing skill shot he played as his first shot in the in the Hill Hill decider and I, I remember talking to Declan about it and asking him about it and he he said he said an answer that I remembered really well because it just showed how the players at the very, very elite level think. And they don't fear missing it. Well, it's the right shot. I'm, I'm in the final. I'm here on merit. It's the right shot. I've got to take it on. If I don't get it, I don't get it. I don't deserve to win, but I've got to go for it. That's the mentality you have yep. to have in finals. You can't, you can't play it safe. No. John, and John wasn't going to play that safe there. He had the opportunity to go. I'm a firm believer in taking the game to your opponent anyway. It, you know, no shrinking violets and all of that. Well, don't leave yourself wishing you'd done more. No. No, oh, I'm always going down all guns blazing. That's for sure. <laughs> On and off the table. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> well, frustration, because I don't think the right-sided red goes. But he can surely can just... He, I mean, it's, it's playing it with the right-hand side, but just top it through the right-hand side off that top row. I know what he's worried about. He's worried about this. You can get a little skid off the rail and it doesn't come back. You know, it doesn't check enough and, it, and it'll come a little bit wide, but you still have to play it. He's looking at coming around, I think. We could do. I mean, but again, you've got the yellow on that left-hand mm -hmm. rail. Plays big. Bit, if you don't play that, that one right. No, he goes, doesn't it? No, they both go. What are you so worried about, John? Oh, I wouldn't want to be there though, just bridging over that yellow. I'd like to be away from that. He's a tall man though, John McAllister. I think he'll be able to get to the centre of the cue ball here. It's not that, it's just having the angle just to come down towards the black ball, Stephen. That's what he wanted to do. See there, he's only been able to come a couple of inches. If he had a bit of angle, he'd have been near enough by to, the, to, the, to, the, yeah. to the blue spot or around that sort of area, which is just then it's a tapping. I mean, he's not going to miss this, but just a bit further away than he'd have liked. Oh, heart of the pocket, never in doubt. Absolutely. Clinical. So much has changed, and you've got to adapt to that. Any player does, but particularly the top ones who've almost set in their ways. They've become world class at something, and then you've got to you've got to find a new way to be world class at something. That's right. It's taken him a bit of time. He's but he's been. He's been lenient with himself. He's not put too much pressure on himself. He's had good results. He got to a semi-final last year. Top of the of the new intake on the rankings by quite a distance. Very decent. But John McAllister is a winner. And he is wanting to win his first ultimate pool Dude. singles title. He's already won the Pairs Cup with Connor Tracy. But I know from speaking to both of them, that ultimate pool pro series gold is what they really want. Harrison there. Using his extension. Much better break there from Phil Harrison as well. Long yellow into this corner. Everything's all open. 
rather not been on the rail, or near to the rail, but be happy enough. And just as John McAllister slid one ahead, you think Harrison is going to peg him straight back. Ideally, Phil would have liked to have got rid of that yellow at the bottom of the table earlier, but because of where he landed, he landed fairly straight on it and he couldn't get a white up to the top of the table, so he's had to leave it there, languishing on its own. It might well have to be his last ball. is important for Phil is he leaves himself a little angry and he can just get that cue ball down the bottom of the table so he's he wants to be as close as possible to that yellow but he needs to leave himself a little angry just to come out for the black but like I say in an ideal world he'd have got rid of that yellow early doors and he would have just been playing these two up the top yeah it's a bit of a fiddly last ball because he wants to leave angle on it which means he'll naturally play it a bit short but that also means if he leaves too much angle he's a bit he's a bit iffy on the bit of traffic that's around the eight ball it's not completely unguarded granted it's a big area but you know these are finals and you want to be precise and you don't want to leave any opportunity for, for errors that's going a bit pacey that is oh, he's, oh, he's on. well that is about as close as he could get without being on it and he's actually perfect to go the other way he can come off the side cushion here but it, or maybe even screw up straight behind the eight ball but that is as close as you'd ever want to go to not being on that yellow that's the Italian job hanging on the edge of the cliff, that one, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, off the side cushion he goes. Oh, no. oh, well. Not this time. You can't say he wasn't warned. No. That, that's exactly the point I was just making. As soon as you're not quite perfect on that last yellow, the reds can become a problem. We well, see, the thing was, Stephen, if he was higher than the yellow, he was pop the cue ball's coming off the bottom rail. With the left-hand side, he was coming through the gap of the two reds. Impossible to snook himself. So because he's come too far and then he's had to change his shot and this is, well, that was the birth of that nightmare. Not off the red in the middle. Oh, no way. It was close. It was close. John would have been pleased with that. Hmm. Yeah, wouldn't he just? Well, it, it's still a bad shot from Phil because even though he was awkward on that yellow, he's been on these tables all day. He knows how they've been playing. The, the, the side has not been taking off the cushions oh. well and you've got to put that little bit extra in he could have been two feet long there and he'd have been on the eight ball well out of the two players here in the final he's been there the more recently mm. yeah I know he's been struggling in the last couple of matches He's he's got a bit of a spongy tip that's giving him a bit of grief and it's not playing how he wants to play but that was a that was a bad error now, is that black ball tight to the to the knuckle of that middle is it Will it be uh, freely accessible? I just wonder why John was just queuing up in that red into the centre. If he thought he had to play it off the eight to, to free it, but I think it, if you're right behind it, just drop it in, can't you? Yeah, I just wonder if because he's he can be on the the red to the right centre perfectly straight in a moment. I just wonder if you do just try and make your life a little easier and just move that eight ball because then it opens it up potentially to the to the bottom right rather than having to land really close on it, if it is tight on that knuckle. Well, the game will be given away here when we see John McAllister play this next shot. Yeah, I wonder if... It, well, he's thinking about it. He's not... I'm not sure if he's... No, these have been yeah. knocked away. If, this, if, yeah. that, if that blacks are tapping, these have already been gone. Yeah, agreed. 
I think there's some merit to playing off the eight ball here. It's risky, but I think the, the payoff is worth it. That looks tight. Yeah, there just a are. little nudge. Didn't need much. But how much easier is that eight ball now? Absolutely. Now it's anywhere in the bottom half of the table and you, you, you make it. John will still be mindful that, you know, a bit of careless play, not leave the right angle, like Phil did. And there you see perfectly on the red. Just gonna, wait, there's two or three ways he can play. I mean, he'll just, I think he'll just slide off the side rail and down, but Chris Melly would probably now play with a screw inside and come off the bottom rail and right behind it. Yeah, lovely. Couldn't play that any better. Lovely control there from McAllister. He has got such a gorgeous touch around the table. And in she goes, and it's 3-1 to John McAllister. Another booming break. He did lose the cue ball slightly if we're splitting hairs, but I don't think he'll mind that too much. Having said that, it's another slightly it's, funky he's got, split. He's got a tough red. He wants reds, obviously. And he's going to... What was it, the one earlier? He had to play a plant length of the table, didn't he? he yeah. But like you said about... He played the, he played the right shot. I, th I think he's got and to stand take... by that. He's got to take the reds in the middle. I, d I, I, I agree. And it's a horrible little shot, that. It's, it's got to be dropped in at dead weight. It's got to be very, very accurate. Also, when you're rolling balls... You tend to leave his fingerprints and stuff like that about it. You mm. can just waver slightly. Well, is he, is he shaking your eyes? He certainly is. Wouldn't you thought that that was a, probably a harder shot to play than the red dribble into the middle? I think I know what he's doing. He's playing that because he thinks if he misses that red into the middle, he's just leaving, fill the frame. I think he thought, well, I'll just go yellows and then... But then, yeah, it's not like there's much more work to do. It was, it was, it was the point I was going to make actually. But then John got down on the shot, so you know, get, let him sit, let him, let nature take its course and all that. But I was going to say the the comfort for him if he had to take that red to the middle that was awkward. Is there's nothing easier on yellows. Maybe he felt the double was easier. You know, you're right in what you say. Phil had a roll off in the in the semi-final not that long ago from his table length dead weight shot that it can happen it's it's not nice but you'd, you'd have fancy John for that shot the double was tough the thing is he's, he's, he's attempted a double he's missed it if he'd have attempted a red and missed it he was still leaving a, a, a finish you know he's left him a finish here now mm. that you'd expect Phil to be well his favourite to get them I think it just comes down to personal preference I just think he preferred the double to the to yeah. the little dilly dally dropping, and if that's your personal preference, I mean he's won a world championship. Who am I to question him? But it, yeah, it, it did look strange in that. But sense. the dilly dally dropping would have won him the frame if he got it. Yeah, I mean he'd, he'd probably yeah. argue so with the double. <laughs> Not having that. <laughs> Not. Well, I'll let you take that up with him. No, thank you. <laughs> Phil's got a little bit of work to do here. These two reds are, well, it's Arctic and Antarctica. He's got to swerve around Africa in the middle. Yeah. Finds the Atlantic. Lovely shot from Harrison. Just dink this with a tiny bit of left-hand side just to bring it away from that yellow ball that's nearby so he's not bridging over it. Harrison hanging on to the coattails of John McAllister. Three two. Yeah, down but not out. He's he's hanging in the he's got a great habit of hanging in matches, Phil Harrison. But as Pro Series one goes into the final furlong. Here's John McAllister who's going to get the chance to take a two-frame lead. But again, 
It's a decent break. Cause there's a good split there. He's but putting a bit more into it on, on his uh, on his swing at the break. Yeah, but I'm not sure what he's left again, Tony. I think there's a few breaks we've had now where they've been objectively good breaks, but just the the split is a bit smelly. Yeah. Can he get to the red at the the top rail and try and play it towards the yellow and red over the bag there? I mean, there's two ways you can play either the plant. It could come off the red and hit into the yellow to knock the red in. Oh, there's your answer. That was a tough shot. That was a really tough shot. Well, Phil's got the opportunity now because that red that he's nearest to there will definitely go into that gap and, and pot the red. So... So he didn't want both, but he's not too concerned now. Then he's got to play this little plant. He's going to have to play it. So he brushes the, the first yellow he's about to strike. He's going to brush off the yellow and just come out so he can have that available into that corner. Two ways again he can play. He can play into the, 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 the gap between the cushion and the red and skip it out that way. We'll play it into the cushion first. I think he's going to play into the gap. He's played that well. For me, he's got to take the red at the top of the table now as well. It's a little cut into the corner, but he needs to leave those three reds at the bottom till last so he can manoeuvre around those to get towards the eight ball. Just wants to bring the cue ball back to basically where he is now. That's perfect. He can part that now, stop the white dead and leaves himself a little angle. He could even, on the, the two reds the, over the bag, he can play the first red, play the left-hand side and off the off the rail and just kick that that yellow away from the black even further so he gives himself a great big path towards the eight ball. He might even, what he could play here actually, is play, dig it with left-hand side, get the keyboard just to go off the side rail and just nudge the black just slightly so it just brings it out off the rail and, and makes it available into that middle pocket you know a little bit more easy so it's quite tight there yeah it's definitely on it's a consideration the only worry is if he comes into that and he hits it a little bit of thin he could the cube will Go slide behind, behind the yellow, the yellow yeah. yeah it's a, it feels a risk that and the one thing i'd add Time foul was close. Yeah, he's played into the yellow. That was and nice. That's the original shot is to bump into the yellow. Yeah, that's nice. But the black's now going to be tricky. He might have the angle. I mean, will he risk screwing into the black now just to, to, to nudge it towards the middle? It's it's such a risk because the top corner pocket is it's not a full pocket. I think if it was, you could maybe... I think he's moving it. Ooh, landing behind it. Never... Uh, See, I would never have done that. I'd, I'd have rather gone and tried to move it than to play this one. Big shot. It is. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, he's played that really well, Harrison. Great black ball. Level again. Luke Sanji 3-2 up on Declan Brennan. That's on table three at the moment. Yeah, Declan having a bit of a sketchy weekend. Yeah, a long way to go in that one but both players have been playing well of late. Fancy it. Another good break. What's the leave like this time? They've been a bit, yeah, a bit funky. It's amazing because you look at the amount of space on the table there. Look where all the balls have gone to. They've flown here, there and everywhere. And yet again, the eight ball's awkward. There's some problems on both sets of colours. Yeah, it's a lovely been, first shot, mind. It's a great shot. Nothing wants to be in the middle of the table, does it? They all just sort of dispatch themselves over towards cushions and little clusters. Yeah, and in each other's way. And, yeah, it's all just a little bit awkward. But that was a lovely opening shot from Johnny. Still got work to do, mind. The red below those two yellows, top right, is the big problem. Rest takes care of itself.
And McAllister still not quite made his mind up how he's going to get rid of this red out of the from behind these two yellows. Well, there, there is an option that he doesn't have to move or cannon anything. Because I think he can land on it as a double. Mm. And you can play through the two yellows and have it as a double. But you'd imagine he hit, he's probably got to try and move it out. Yeah, I think he's coming downstairs first. There's no way you can play that now and then play that double and expect to be on this ball no. at the bottom. So he's definitely coming down here. Has to. But you might be right there, Stephen, because I can't see a lot else. The longer you leave that there, you can't just kick into it and then expect to be on it. Well, oh. Phil's just tapped his knee, and I just wonder, because Phil's got a perfect line from where he's sitting, from that red to the side cushion to the middle pocket, if he's thinking the double's the shot. I think it is now, and, and it's a good spot, Stephen. Okay. 10 out of 10, sir. Gold oh. star for you. I can see him every now and then. Well, he's took your advice, that's for sure. It's a big shot, mind. And he's got to screw the cue ball out of there as well. This would be one for the high low reel if he gets it. Oh, this is frame ball. Bang. Oh, and he played the top spin way around it as well. Oh, great shot. What an out from John McAllister, that is. That was tasty. Stephen Jameson, the pool encyclopedia. <laughs> oh, the, the, the new live scoring system is doing a little <laughs> bit of heavy lifting for me there. Dry break, though, for Phil Harrison. Yeah. And that is not what he needed, because I think for the, the worst news is for him is this is the most open split we've had in a while. Again, it's the starting ball for John McAllister. If he can... I don't think he can get past that yellow on the top right yeah. to, the, to that red. I, I don't know if he's got anything down the table. I think Phil might have got lucky here. Has he got the red he's closest to into the right middle? Is that all he's got? Oh, he's played the safety. Well, I'll tell you what, you can't blame him. It's a really good shot there, because you've got to hit a cushion after contact, of course. And what he's done quite cleverly, he's used the angle of that red he's to really ball. nestle in behind. He's touching ball there. That, I'm still touching. So remember, even in these nip and tuck safety exchanges, you must hit a cushion after contact, which makes these shots, I mean, horrible. <laughs> Never been a fan of these little tippy tappy things. Oh, awful. Yeah, don't like him at all. Referee Trish on hand to spot any fouls. You've got to be so on it as a referee on these exchanges. So It's so easy to foul. A little double hit, little push shot. It's, it's easily both, done. Both players are searching to get, to get on yellows here as well. That's the thing. So you can... Phil Harrison obviously now has that red available into the right-hand centre, but he doesn't want it. He doesn't want reds. Extension being called there from Harrison. Neither player wants to be the first to take the leap. He's going for the cut in the middle with the yellow. But Phil Harrison has decided he has to. He's got it. Great shot. But what's he been left with? I don't know if he's on much, you know, Tony. I don't know if that... Uh, does, does the yellow go? Left centre? If it does, it's far jaw, and it's a far jaw dribble. <laughs> yeah, it looks Ooh, tight, doesn't it? It does look tight. Well, you can never rely on Phil's body language. If you're watching right now and you think, well, of course it doesn't go. Phil, Phil's tutting away and shaking his head. He might just roll this in centre pocket. Oh, he's, putting some, he's putting a bit of bottom on this one. Yeah, that was Ooh, tight. It was tight. I think it did go, though. It did. I, th I think that the only way you can pull that really is to dribble it. I think because he put a little bit of force in there, it just skimmed that red in it. <laughs> Josh Kane, uh, I think, with an expression there, says, are you all right, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> Lucy <laughs> Josh there sat behind him. Yeah, I think he just looks in shock that Phil's missed. I'm in shock too. Chance for John McAllister. Going into them. Oh, he didn't knock any of them out. Well, that couldn't have really gone much worse, to be honest no, with you. No, he couldn't. Yeah, and he's acknowledging that little, little nod of the head. He's got to find a way to withdraw here. 
I'm not sure he can. It's one of those where the situation at the table is so dire on reds that you're almost your best bet's probably going for them and trying to make a miracle clearance because that's easier than finding some sort of safety. Just wild abandon, just go. You can nick that one in the middle, that helps. Well, you can play his cross double. Now you can also free an extra red here. Well, we're coming in towards the final 15 minutes of this match. I'd be absolutely amazed if any of these two got to eight from here. We're about to head into the witching hour. Well, we know Mikasa likes a double, so you'd expect him to get this. Be very close. Oh, he's we going for the corner. I think he tried to knock them all out there with playing playing that way. He said, "Try and knock the, the the two reds out all in one shot." It was a tougher shot, though. It was a it tougher was. double. The double into the middle was. I, I think he'd have made it, but he was only knocking the one red out, and he thought, "Well, if I play it in the corner, I can get both out." Same shot and leave myself frame up in there. Daniel Ram Randall be behind him there. Yeah, some familiar faces in John's corner. Jeff, who's always in John's corner, is never too far away from his shoulder. Partner Daniel also part of the family now. And Daniel's won a, a big event as well. Yeah, won a pro series last season. women's series as it as it was then it's now the pro series Indeed. for the women they got underway today and plenty of big games Ooh, now then well that wasn't in the script no it wasn't that was not in the script at all and wouldn't you know it Phil's taking a few balls off the table here and reds don't look as bad they're still not nice. Well, head shake from John McAllister will tell you that. Can he play the loss of turn and just bump that red off and make Phil fire down the table at the two yellows? Tough because it would be very hard to hide that other yellow at the top. I, I think John almost feels that way. He, a loss of turn there. It's so it's almost impossible to get the cue ball safe. It's that, it's that same conversation he's had in his head as before. What's easier, playing safe or going for gold? And I think he's he's lining up a combination. Well, then that he could he could smash this through the load of top and kick the red out and bring everything down down the bottom of the table. But the two reds stuck together there at the bottom, Stephen. I'm not sure if the, if either of them actually go. Looks very tight with the outside one into the corner. Always played short position. Maybe he wants to play it this way so he can come down the, the table and nudge them. Yeah. I mean, hold on to your hats here, because, well, they don't go. No. So, well, I mean, if John McAllister gets out from here, he's played an absolute miracle clearance. Well, this is right up there with, you know, this is such a low percentage shot. <laughs> oh, I tell you what. John. Oh, I tell you Oof. what, Tony. That is an unbelievable shot from John McAllister. Wow. He actually deserves better. Because he's dead straight on this red to the bottom right. I think he might be able to just, if he could borrow a little bit of angle, get a load of screw and right hand side and spin it out. But then you know, watch for the black, he might can into that. He's been desperately unlucky. For what a good shot that was, he deserved more. Can he still find a way out? He's oh, you it with better side. believe it. This is an obscene finish. <laughs> this is a disgusting finish uh -huh. to take out in a Pro Series final. Two shots away from completing the job and, doing, and going two frames clear. Call the police because this one's been stolen. Oh, what a finish. Yeah. Awkward queuing, but rolls in the eight ball. That is a naughty finish. That's the finish of the week for me so far. But you can never write off Phil Harrison. Yeah, you'd be foolish to. Especially as John has somehow broken dry. But the thing that that sort of finish does to Phil Harrison is plonk it firmly 
in the forefront of his mind that if he makes any mistakes at all, then McAllister is, is capable of just taking them out from absolutely anywhere. I mean, that, that's just mind-blowing finish. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Such a big frame now, this for Harrison. So we can see we're going to steering into the last 10 minutes on the match clock. And McAllister has a two frame lead. So this frame here becomes, I think, very, very big indeed. Well, they're all big, but for a 6 3, if, if the Harrison needs to win this just to stay in touch with the time running out. Here we are then. 15 seconds a shot. Yeah, we've entered the witching hour. 15 second shot clock for the final 10 minutes of the Pro Series 1 final. This is this is the time where where winners become champions. Okay, I think. He still needs to move that red though. The one just yeah. to the left of the cue ball. Yeah, and he's not got the time to figure it out. Oh, I tell you what, what an effort. <laughs> it's some effort. He deserved a little bit more. I just wonder if he's got some creative double to play here, Phil Harrison. He is one of the best ever at a double. Oh, it wasn't, it far, wasn't away. far away. It was not far away. But John McAllister can break the back of the match here. He can. And he hasn't got to, well, I'd say he hasn't got to gallop about. But um. Well, this is the only question mark for me. We've seen John play so well today. He's barely even seen the 15-second shot clock. And it's something I know he struggled to adapt to in his first season as an ultimate pool pro. He's been putting on, he's been putting in plenty of time. He's been getting that practice in he's been growing through the year and in this his first tournament of 2024 the training wheels are off and it's now time to see if he can finish the job under the toughest circumstances that played the yellow off the red no thought it might for a second Going about his business, still looking rather calm, cool, and collected. He's got a fabulous temperament as as John. He never looks, he never gets too carried away. And this is looking ominous. Just make sure he leaves himself an angle on this yellow into the middle. He's just used his extension now as well. He hadn't used it until now. Which is a good which is a good sign. Yeah. It shows he's not panicking. You know, your first instinct when you're out there can be, oh god, fifteen seconds extension, bang. Yeah. And get some time to think. Yeah, there's a lot to do it. But it, he's he's thinking clearly out there. Well, he's played to leave himself a double. Well, double back into the middle. We've seen a few doubles in this final already. John McAllister attempted quite a few of them. This one's pretty straightforward, really. Nothing to do with the cue ball. Just guide it back into the middle and in it goes. And it's there. Mm. You can see the loved ones in his corner. It's more nervous for them than it is for John McAllister, that is for sure. But that's a lovely shot. See Dan Daniel's hands over his <laughs> yeah. face. It's horrible to watch. So this, well, it's must get ball off break for Phil Harrison. Oof. Great break. 
don't think you've got time to pull that face, Phil. You're going to have to get up with it. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? It is. It's such a tough environment. They're in the pressure cooker. I mean, there's a glimmer, but he's, he really has to, to get a move on. Yellow's such an important shot here. Doesn't want to hang this one. It's a great pot. Oh, develop that yellow as well. Push over the middle. Right, these are there. Once again, I'm going to say you cannot be standing to, to, to have a judge and see where you need to be. You need to be putting these balls in. You think one miss here now and it's gone because I think where the reds are, McAllister would just use his 15 seconds on each and every one of those reds and that would be enough to eat away the clock sufficiently enough for, to make it impossible for Phil to, to come back. Great pot from Harrison. Super oh, pot. We've got a little jog around the table. <laughs> he has had some incredible buzzer beaters as Phil Harrison. He has got form. He's had a bit of a love-hate relationship with the shot clock. He's had some crushing results go the other way as well. But this is a this is a brilliant finish, you know. Well, it gets this down already. He's still got over four minutes. So, but we get, he's going to need McAllister to go dry. Well, that's one back. It's one back. Phil Harrison is back in the hunt. It is not all over. Always in off Tony, wouldn't you know it? And look at these. I said the only way he does it because he's, he's got he pots so well off the break, John. It would have to be an in off. And it's well, Phil scores extension. I don't mind that. It's a good time to do it. Map out the clearance now and then fly. This is the most important shot. Wants to nudge that red away from that yellow just next to him. Like that. Yeah, he's, now they're all there. That was the, just a little bit of time he needed, and now Phil Harrison can go to work. The jogging farmer. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, he's at least. It's like he still stops for a second and he springs into action with the bus. Oh, oh, forgot about that. I still think he's, he's, he could be saving t some time here, and, he, and he's. He's quite straightforward, even you know, even at 15 seconds a shot. It's so harsh to be critical, I know, but, I know, it's, but it's the feeling you get. Well, I'm trying to speed him up. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm sure everybody that's watching it, you're thinking, come on, mate, run, run. Yeah. It's, he's not in too bad a position, though. Three minutes left, it's not... It's not all over, it's okay. And it's his break coming. It's his break next, crucially. I agree. Can you do it? Well, stop it. I've stop I've, it. Steve. I've learned over the years that nothing is to be ruled out. Stop it. Well, this is incredible. He's going to go one away. What a final. Are oh, we still to have late Two drama? And a half. There's still loads of time left, you know, Tony. Yeah, There's still loads of time. Doesn't feel like a lot. It certainly doesn't feel like a lot if you're Phil Harrison right now. But two and a half minutes for John McAllister feels like a decade. All he wants is for that clock to strike zero and to get out of dodge. And needs one frame to tie it up, two to win. At this point, neither player will get to eight. Desperate for a ball. Desperate for a ball. He's not going to get one. And it's gone a little bit ugly. And this is manna from heaven for John McAllister. Extension. That'll be coming, won't it? Well, I wonder if he can do some quick maths here. Because he's got one, two, three, four, five open yellows. 15 seconds of yellow. He can take the game away. But it looks like he's looking at reds. He is. Well, he's tied up Phil's yellow up there. That's one thing. I, me, I'll be putting, like, like you say, as many reds as I could now and just leave that one at the top of the table and take pretty much 14 seconds to knock them all in. If you hear the beeps on every shot, John McAllister will be happy. 
He just needs to stay at the table. If he stays at the table, he's champion. But he cannot allow Phil enough time to come back. Keep an eye on that clock at the bottom of the screen. It is so important. Ooh, he's going game. He's going for it. He goes in that top right-hand corner. Well, this would be a clutch way to do it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because if if you weren't running, if you were purely focusing on the clock, you wouldn't go near this red. But John McAllister wants to win it in style, and he's going to miss. And Phil Harrison has himself 54 seconds. Will that prove to be costly? Will that prove Ooh, to be costly? It's not all over for Phil. He's got options. Oh, he tried to nudge the two yellows apart. Could he play the plant, the cut plant into the middle, screw the cubel into the red at the top? We've ticked past 30 seconds. Oh. What a shot on that red. 25 seconds. Can Phil Harrison force a six red shoots out? Oh, that's an incredible pot. It's an unbelievable pot, but I think he's going to run out of time. The cubel's not helping him, but not stopping. Well, here we go. It's a good old-fashioned oh. whack, and the eight ball's gone in. The yellow went in as well. It's a smile for the farmer, but it is through. A bit of a grimace as well. John McAllister, for the first time, is an Ultimate Pool Pro Series champion. It's an incredible end. They have to play it out. The match isn't over. This is academic. No golden break or golden duck. John McAllister has won the match. And that is that. <laughs> Phil Harrison plays up to the crowd in touch, but there's the shake of hands. And it is confirmed. John McAllister, for the first time, the former world champion, has made the leap. Your ultimate pool, Pro Series 1 champion for 2024, is John McAllister.